All right, so we're picking off right where we were last. Uh, we have our working modal, which is opening and closing, which is really, really cool. Uh, the only thing now is we want to look at how we can make that fade in and fade out instead of just appearing and disappearing. So normally you'd be able to just use uh, some sort of transition on it. The only problem is um, because we're using the display to make it appear and disappear, and you might see other instances of people using Z index to pull things to the front and push them all the way to the back, um, you can't animate those, right? We can't put transitions on the display block to um, none, and we can't do it for Z index either. So it makes it a little difficult uh, to actually make this work so well. Um, but it's not too bad. It's really not that bad. And we're going to look at how we can do that right now. And we're also going to make our, our JavaScript a little bit more, um, well, it's not too bad right now, but we're, you're going to see it's going to get um, a little bit different. So the first thing I'm going to do is back in my portfolio here, uh, I need to come through and I'm going to make an animation that I'm going to reference um, throughout. So in here, uh, keyframes, I mean, a really simple one. We're going to call this one um, modal in. So the animate the modal in, it's going to go from a 0%. So opacity will be 0 at the start of the animation. And at 100%, so when the animation finishes, the opacity will be 1. And that's it. And so I'm going to take the same thing. Actually, modal, I'm going to call this modal fade. I think we can do it all with one animation. I was going to make two, but I think we can do it just with this. Um, so it's going to go from zero to one. And then when we close it, we want it to go from 100 to zero. And we want to have it use this animation. So what we're going to do for this to work is um, we need to you fix up this JavaScript just a little bit. So instead of having this here, um, we're going to make this into, we're going to call it modal open. So modal open is going to be equal to a function. And that function will do this. So the function is going to add is open, but it's also going to do modal style animation. So this is going to add an inline style where we're going to have animation. And that style is going to be equal to, um, we called it modal fade. We're going to do it over, say, 500 milliseconds, and we want it to be forwards. So um, the style animation, so this is just like if I came into here and I did uh, example animation, and then I did modal fade. Uh, 500 milliseconds, whatever, uh, forwards, I think I wrote forwards. So when I'm doing it here, I'm saying that the modal, so my modals style is animation. So it's, you know, this would be my modal, not example, but it's just like writing it like that, except it's going to do it as an inline, uh, uh, inline style. So when I save that, it should fade in when I click on this or it just won't work at all. Oh, whoops. <laughs> so um, the reason it's not doing anything right now is I've made this into a function. So because this is a function, I need to call that function for it to work. So let's go and call that function, modal open. Save that. So now when I click, we're gonna prevent default, we're gonna set all of these things up, and then with all of those set up, we're gonna, so it's pretty much when I click, run modal open. What's modal open? It's this right here. So let's try that again. I'm gonna click here, and look there, it faded in. But when I close it, it doesn't fade out. Hey, my button doesn't look so nice now. Did it change depending on screen size? It looks good there, and it looks worse there. Oh well, we'll maybe fix that up. Um, so it's disappearing. So when I close it, this is where it gets a little bit trickier. Um, but it's, it's all good. And the other thing we're also add now is right now, if I open it, um, I can only get out by pushing this. We're also going to make it. So if you push escape, we can get out. Cause I think that's a pretty standard, uh, way of working. 
So right now, when I add event listener, click. So we're right now we're just removing is open. But what I need to do is I need to do this first. So I need to I need to well not this I need to do the same thing but backwards. So the first thing I need to do is remove the enemy or is fade my fade my thing out. So if I took this here, copy and pasted it here and reverse reverse. I think that would work. Um, but the problem is it's going to do this and this at the exact same time or within a fraction of a second. So while it's fading out, it's going to, you know, maybe have a split second of fading out and then it's gone. You won't even notice. It's just going to disappear because it's going to display none. So I'm actually going to remove the is open from here and save. So now when I click, it's going to open. And when I click, it should fade out inspect element. I thought this would work. I wasn't sure about using the same one to be honest with you. Um, I just want to make sure. No, I'm not getting any errors. Animation 500 milliseconds ease 0 1 reverse none running modal fade. What? Re so mm, where's my modal? Modal 1 modal. Okay, portfolio modal. So when I click on this 500 milliseconds ease zero seconds. Uh, it's because so um, let's go back to here. Maybe I do actually need. Let's call this one fade in. Copy that and paste and zero percent is one and then zero and we're gonna do a fade out. Um, so it's just the exact opposite. I just want to see. So that's fade. Um, Modal, uh, modal in, modal out, forwards, save. That worked. There we go. Okay, because it had the same uh, animation name, it didn't really seem to understand. It, it wasn't running the animation again. Now, the problem is um, I've faded it out, so it looks like it's disappeared, but it's still on top of everything. It just has an opacity of zero, so I can't actually click on anything. Um, I can't do anything. I can't scroll. I'm just stuck here. So that's a problem, obviously, but I need to do this first. So when I click on the button, we will do this. After that's done, though, we want to do something else. Yeah, so what I want to do is a modal. So I'm, again, looking at the same modal, add event listener. And we're going to look for something called animate, uh, animation, sorry, animation end. And when that happens, we have to do something. We can call a function. So we're going to create something called modal close. So what this means is it's going to look for an animation to be running. And when that animation uh, ends, so it's going to look for the end of the animation. So when the animation is finished, it's going to run a function. So that function we're going to call modal close. So we have a modal open. So let's make const modal close. And what we're going to do for modal close, we'll make that into a function. Um, the modal close is pretty simple. And we're going to do modal class list remove is open. OK. So what happens is we're going to add the event listener animation end. And when animation ends, so when the animation's finished, we're going to run modal close. And what modal close is, is it's this here. Where, so we're going to say modal class list remove is open. So after the animation, we can remove this. So if I click on this, perfect. Except we have a little problem. And if I click this, it's going to go away. But now if I try opening it again, whoop, it disappears. So the problem is this event listener never went away. This event listener is still here. So anytime an animation runs, as soon as that animation finishes, it's closing the modal automatically. So we need to remove the event listener. So when we do this, so when we remove is open, we also want to say modal remove event listener. Uh, animation and modal close. Anytime you want to remove an event listener, you have to have it the same everywhere or it won't work. Um, so we're removing. So first we're animating out when the animation is done. We're going to run the function modal close. Modal close is going to remove is open 
and it's going to remove this event listener. So that means if I click, it opens, it's working all good. If I click, it goes away. And now there's no event listener anymore. The event listener comes on now. And then once it's gone, the event listener has gone again. So it won't cause any issues. Now we also, I mentioned, want to do this for um, if somebody pushes escape on their keyboard, which I think is pretty useful um, to be able to do. So I'm going to add that in as well. Um, so what we want to do is say document add event listener. I said we wanted limit event listeners and I keep creating new ones. Uh, key down. So key down and I'm going to do E. So we want to keep track of the event. And I'm just going to do a console log E. And we're going to save that. So I'm going to show you what's going to happen. So we're going to open up our inspect element. Let's go to my console and I'm going to just push a key on my keyboard. Oh, because nothing's open. Let's open this up. Now, there we go. So when this is open, we're running our event listener. Um, so you can see A, S, D. You can see I can, I can get whatever key I want. One, two, three, escape, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And one thing with this is every key has its own key code. So we have a key, we have a key code, we have a car code and all of that stuff. So if I push escape, I can see that the escape has a key code of 27. So if I do console log E dot key code and save, you can make your life even easier. So let's open that back up. And now, depending on what key I push, it's only showing me the key code. If I push escape, you can see it's 27 right there. So what I want to do is if the events key code is 27, I want to do pretty much the exact same thing I did here, which means I probably could have made this into something too. Whoops, copy and paste that right there. So let's save that. So if somebody pushes escape when the modal's open, it's going to close the modal. So let's just try that out. I'm gonna click, it opens, and let's push escape, and it closes. Awesome, so that works. And one more time, open, close, good. Uh, and now the last thing that I want to look at is right now we get this, um, the scroll bar. So when I open my modal, I can still scroll that back window. I don't know about you, but that's not my favorite behavior. Um, so I'm going to turn that behavior off. And the way I'm going to do that is uh, in my modal open, I'm going to say document body style overflow y is equal to hidden. So I'm going to save that. Let's just go see if this even works. So right now I can scroll. When I open that, you can see that other scroll bar just disappeared because the overflow y is hidden. So the body doesn't, it, it's just hidden. It won't scroll anymore. And now I can scroll here, no problem. And when I close that, Oh no, I don't have a scroll bar. So we do have to come and say here that document, document body style overflow y is equal to scroll. Scroll. So now I'm gonna click, it opens, I can't scroll. I can only scroll inside my box here. And if I close it, I go back to that. Now the only downside with this is it does give you that little jump here. You see how it jumps? Um, I guess you could take this and have that happen um, here instead. And if you do that, just make sure you put it in both of these spots. And because I'm repeating myself so much here, that should probably be its own function as well. Um, so if I click there, when I hit escape, 
it's a little less jumpy because it's adding the scroll bar back right away. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. You still do get a little jump in the content. So that just comes down to which you like more. Do you like have, do you, does the double scroll bar bother you more or does the little jump in content when you go back and forth bother you more? If you're on a Mac, it's going to be even less obvious because they have those little tiny hidden scroll bars compared to what we get on Windows. Um, so either way, one or the other might bother you a lot less. Let's just go and make sure this is really working because I've only done one modal so far. So let's come and bring in a second modal. So where's my first one is here. So I'm just gonna take this whole thing, copy and paste it in. Uh, but this is my second one. So I should change my pictures. Whoops, I'm all over the place here. Let's just change the pictures so we know it's actually the right one. Two, two, two. Um, and in my, I'm gonna say, I'll just put project name two. And here, where I had my portfolio image. This was silly of me. Um, this should also come on this one. Because all I should have to change is the background image. And then this would just be two, two. Save that. And let's see if this works. So my first one is this one. And my second one is that one. Project name two is working. The nth of type thing is not working. My images have changed. Okay, well, I'll just fix that now. Portfolio header one, <laughs> portfolio header two. And we'd have to do a three and a four and a five. Um, it just does mean there's a little bit more work to do in the markup that I was hoping to avoid. Oh, actually, this should have a space. Uh, portfolio header header one, let's say, uh, except I'm in my second one, header two, and my other one would have been portfolio header, header one, header one, header two, save. There we go. And we're all done. I'm not gonna populate the rest of them. It's all the exact same stuff. Um, and I think it gives you a good idea of how this should work. It doesn't matter how many portfolio items you have, it should work equally well with all of them uh, and with across all of them and no problems with any of that. So please let me know if you like this video and this whole series and the new way I did it where I tried to break it up into a lot of small parts all being released on the same day. Uh, instead of just bigger videos less often. Um, it's still gonna be videos every Wednesday, but I might try and do this more where I'm breaking the videos up into smaller pieces. Um, but yeah, I hope you liked this video and this this whole thing, and I hope it makes sense. If you have any problems, please let me know in the comments. If you liked it, please leave a comment to let me know that you did like it. And um, as a last thing, I just wanna say thank you for all the people who have watched this whole series. You guys have been awesome, really just, there's been lots of comments going on and awesome discussion. Uh, and I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I'm really bad at this type of thing, but if you've watched it through this far and you really enjoyed this series, please do consider supporting me on Patreon. The support I get on there makes this possible, so a big thank you to my current patrons who are there. And uh, if you do have the ability to support me, I would greatly appreciate it, but don't feel it as an obligation at all. And until next time, don't forget to make your corn on the internet just a little bit more awesome.